CataractCoach.com. Always give the benefit of the doubt. This is a critically important lesson in ophthalmic surgery. Here's what I mean by that. This is the patient's first eye. I had surgery done elsewhere about a year ago, and you can see there's some iatrogenic issues there, some loss of some iris pigment. Yeah, otherwise, it looks okay. The patient says he's not real happy with that outcome, even though the outcome's pretty close to planar with a trifocal lens. Now, the patient's come to you for a second opinion. Well, it just so happens I know the surgeon who did surgery on the first eye. He was a former resident of mine who was fantastic, very talented doctor. And I'm sure he did a really good job. And I know the doctor personally. I know his skills. I've attended him for 50 or 100 surgeries in the operating room as a resident. He's certainly gotten way better with time. And he's a doctor who treats from the heart. He really is a good doctor, like the one you'd send your family to. And yet the patient's upset. So I have to give that doctor the benefit of the doubt. And so the patient, of course, you saw on the other side, has a very small pupil. And resting pupil size is very small, so maybe he won't get the full benefit of a trifocal lens. So the patient's adamant that he wants a monofocal lens on this side. We've gone over all the options. He's absolutely in agreement. And, hey, I'm game. We'll go for that. No problem at all. But I also know that I need to give the other surgeon the benefit of the doubt. Whether it's someone I know, like in this case, or if it's another cataract surgeon whom I don't know. Here's why. Result of surgery is half of it your technique, your technique, your technology, your style, your precision, your, okay, great. And half of it is the patient's healing response and the patient's tissues and the patient's anatomy. And what happens in a case like this where he's a Mr. Flomax guy? Look how that iris already wants to prolapse out of the eye. Look how the pupil already came down. Of course I understand why the other I had some iatrogenic iris issues and iris atrophy. That's to be expected. This is a tough case. So by doing yourself a favor of giving the first surgeon or the other surgeon the benefit of the doubt, saying, yeah, that surgeon's probably pretty good. I may not know who he or she is. But I'll give that surgeon the benefit of the doubt that that's a pretty good surgeon. And there's a large part of the problem being the patient tissue and patient healing response and patient anatomy. And you can see that's the issue. Even when I go to chop the nucleus, it's kind of a gooey, mushy nucleus. It doesn't want to chop. I'm not having a very easy time bringing the pieces up. Look, now I get it. This is not a slam dunk simple case. The patient's on Flomax, the pupils are small, it's already come down a little bit, there's some floppiness there, the nucleus is that mush nucleus that doesn't want to split, even I'm having to work for it, look. And so I always give the first surgeon, the unknown surgeon, the benefit of the doubt. We're a small group of ophthalmologists, remember this, we only train about 450, maybe 480 ophthalmologists a year in the USA, in the entire country, of 350 plus million people, that's all we're training. That's a pretty rare thing. Ophthalmologists in America is literally, a new ophthalmologist is literally one in a million, right? Very few of us, for a new ophthalmologist at least, your first year out. And you've got to understand that all your ophthalmology colleagues have a good heart. They all want the patient to have the best. We want patients to have great outcomes. It behooves us. It makes us happy. I'm most happy when the patient has an incredibly beautiful outcome and great visual acuity. So give your fellow surgeons the benefit of that doubt. This is such a great lesson to learn when you're a resident or you're a young surgeon in practice. You really have to be very careful about that, the way you think. Remember, anytime you see a patient with what you think looks like iatrogenic damage or some complication from surgery, remember. You're going to do the second eye? That could be you. You know, it's funny. Studies even bear this out. You know, the study, there's a study that shows that if a patient gets cystoid macular edema in the first eye from cataract surgery, there's a 50% chance that in the second eye, they're going to get the same thing, regardless of how perfect your technique is. Look at that iris prolapse. I told you, flow max eye. This is a tough case. So when you see a patient who's coming to you for a second eye and the first eye was done elsewhere and there were some clearly some issues or complications or problems, remember, patient anatomy, patient healing, all these things, protoplasm, it plays a big role in the outcome. And we have to assume that the other surgeon, the unknown surgeon who did the other eye, actually does have good skills. We have strict criteria for training here in the U.S. And if you went through the training... I'm sure you're going to be a pretty competent surgeon. 
So here you go. Look at the pupil size now at the end of the case compared to the beginning of the case. Definitely a Flomax case. I'm so happy I gave the patient the advice that, hey, your first eye, it looks like a pretty reasonable outcome considering all the issues of Flomax and bad healing and floppy iris and small pupils. All these things play a role. So it's very important, give the first surgeon the benefit of the doubt. This is such a key lesson that sometimes, you know, it's not taught in your academy books. Your basic science books from the academy, I don't know if they teach this. This is not taught in a lot of residency programs, but it should be, and it's an important lesson. So do like I do. Whenever I see a patient for another opinion, had surgery elsewhere, remember the two sides of the same coin is one is the surgeon and the technique and the technologies and whatever else was done in the surgery. And the other side of the same coin is how's the patient healing response? How's the tissue? How's the anatomy? And all those things play a very important role. So again, last time I'm saying it, don't make me ever repeat it again. You give the other surgeon the benefit of the doubt always because that surgeon is really as good as you.